Firstly, your arrival. You will be given um, an arrival time on your documents. We ask you please to arrive promptly. And we also ask you to phone us 10 minutes beforehand so that we know the exact time you're going to be here. That is important because we can only have one party here at any one time for social distancing. So when you arrive, you'll come here to our office um, and our receptionist will see you, one person only please from your party, to come and say hello and then our receptionist will look after you and we will then start the handover process. So fast forwarding in time and unfortunately your holiday is now over and it's time for you to return to the boat. So to make this smooth a process as possible, when you check in, we're going to give you the time you must return to the boat. And it's really important that we get this down to the closest time as possible that we give you. This is so we only have one boat coming in at any one time for social distancing. When you arrive back, we're going to ask you to moor at the jetty that's where you pick the boat up from. It is a one-way system. You can only go once one way around the island. Please do not try and come in the other way round um, because you'll be asked to go back and do it again. Uh, we will do this with you on the handover process. So when you bring the boat back, we want you to get everything off the boat, please, all packed, ready to go before you arrive at the jetty. This is to minimise the time that you are on the jetty. So as soon as the boat is in, your guys are all packed off at the back deck. So you're going to get off at the bit at the back where you're driving the boat. Okay, everything off, and then the driver then goes back to our offices, which are here, and does the checkout process. The rest of the party, please, finish unpacking the boat, straight to your car, um, and then that is basically it. times this is a life jacket to put the life jacket on put your arm through just like putting your coat on and then there is a clasp at the front which secures it it must be snug so it must fit you nice and snugly if it doesn't there are straps to adjust it and make it smaller or let it out and make it bigger. If you fall in the water, it will automatically inflate on impact. If it doesn't automatically inflate, there is a little red toggle here. You pull the toggle and it will inflate. Please don't, do not pull the toggle if you're out of the water. There is a charge of 25 pounds to rearm it. So your bank account will be slightly lighter if you do inflate it. If it's not snug, then what will happen is, if you did fall in, if it would raise up round here, your head would be under the water, and we all know what might happen. Please make sure it's nice and snug. Children's life jackets. This life jacket is for ages 5 to 10. This one is for ages 2 to 5. I'm going to demo the 5 to 10 one first. You put it on in exactly the same way as an adult life jacket, putting your jacket on. The clasp is different. Fasten the clasp, put this one through that, and it's fastened. It's quite complicated, so it means children can't undo it themselves. Again, this one also automatically inflates on impact. If not, if there is a red toggle here. Please ensure that your child does not pull the red toggle when they are out of the water. There's also an additional crop strap to keep them safe, which goes up under their legs and clips in at the front. They must wear the crotch strap at all time. We also call it the mouse's tail. Um, the only, they will need to undo it though when they go to the toilet. The two to five year old one is very much a jacket style with a zip at the front and the clasp is exactly the same as the adult one with the alterations there. This one doesn't need to um, automatically inflate because it's already got the life buoys inside it. But it does have the crotch strap, which again goes up between their legs and clips in here. So now here's a few tips on health and safety so that you all enjoy a safe holiday whilst you float. So first of all, I'm going to just draw your attention to what's called the tiller circle. This is the tiller. 
and it operates the rudder so we steer the boat with this and when you're on deck and you're driving the boat please this area has to be kept clear of anybody no one can come and stand or sit here so that if you have to suddenly do this or you have to suddenly do this in order to move the boat quickly then anyone that's obviously here isn't going to get in the way and they're not going to go for a little preemptive swim so that's the first thing the tiller circle so keep this whole area clear secondly this is the throttle if anybody falls in very very important the first thing you do is you put this into neutral neutral is the upright position that means the propeller is now not going round and when you've got a visual on the person then they can then get themselves to safety it's always i'd say imperative that the person gets out of the water if they can um, swim ashore it's easier to get somebody off from the shore than it is to try and pick them up off the boat always be aware though of that propeller so neutral before you do anything else secondly where you can and can't go on the boat it's not like a house there are areas of the boat which are a no-go zone for a reason first of all the roof of the boat with all this lovely sunshine i know it is so tempting to sunbathe on the roof but this is a forbidden area please no one is to go on the roof unless it is to get something that you desperately need like the boat pole or something or to get to the middle rope but no one is allowed to sit on the roof or walk on the roof or sunbathe on the roof sorry but you have got ample space on the back deck and on the front deck to do those wonderful things so no going over the roof secondly if you want to get from the back of the boat to the front of the boat we always go through the boat never ever walk around the perimeter of the boat it's a very very narrow ledge and most people who attempt this usually end up in the water so we strongly advise that you do not go around the perimeter of the boat if you need to exit the boat we always go from the back of the boat and always have one hand on the boat and then we simply just step ashore. A little tip, if you are stepping ashore, it's always a good idea to take the rope with you. So now we come to mooring up. When you're arriving at your place where you wish to moor, whoever's crewing, your first thing you have to do is to look at the bank and decide, is there somewhere I can put a rope on? Is there, a, for instance, a cleat? Is there a bollard? Is there a post? If there isn't anything, then you'll have to get the three stakes out of the locker and the mallet ready. In this case, we're lucky because we've got the cleat here. This is a service pontoon. So in preparation, when you're arriving to any mooring, you've got to get the front rope ready. So you always take the rope from the boat end. Take a section of rope. I always stretch my arms out. It gives me a good length. I'm going to twist and turn it to make a nice loop. And I'm going to keep doing this until I get to the end of the rope. Careful not to get kinks. If you get any kinks, just straighten them out like so. It's a bit of a dusty day today, so I've got some flicks on this one. Now I'm going to take the ends of the rope and I'm going to hold it between my little finger and my ring finger, like so. This is to remind me not to let go of this end. I'm then going to give the boat rope a coil back and I'm going to separate the coils 50-50 so there is one boat length between the two coils. I'm going to set my sights on that cleat there and I'm going to now lasso this rope past the cleat so that we loop it. Now I'm going to put my palms always face me and my finger top tips are pointing to the sky. I'm going to now flick my wrists and I'm going to flick it and send this loop over there. I haven't let go of the end of the rope. So now I can pull the end of the rope and this will bring the boat in. And now I can pull and very safely bring in the boat to the bank. I've not had to leave the boat at all, it's all very safe. Now if I did have to leave the boat to step ashore, if I couldn't lasso anything, then what I would do, I would have my rope in this hand, always have one hand on the boat itself, step, and then you're going to simply step ashore. If you can't step ashore, don't go ashore. Never ever leave. I'm going to cleat off now, I'm going to do a loop 
and then I'm going to make a figure eight and then I'm going to do another loop and then just to finish off I'm going to make a loop here so this rope sits on top flip it over and pull that's called pleating off if I'm going to leave the boat I would always take the rope and take it back onto the boat itself and cleat off there, which I'll demonstrate. This boat's got a little bit loose, so I'm just going to pull her in again. I'd probably be tightening that while it's going to stay for any length of time. But for now, just as this is a demonstration, I will step onto the boat again with the rope and then repeat the process on the cleat of the boat here. So again, take a whole turn and then do a figure eight and then do another turn and then just to finish off take the end of the rope make a loop so the end of the rope sits on the top flip the pancake as they say and pull and there we have the boat safely moored up if you're mooring up overnight or going to leave the boat it's really important that you moor up the front rope and the back rope and also a centre line as well which is located in the middle of the boat and then you have got three lines holding the boat in place so when you're cruising on the water here are a few safety tips firstly the speed limit is five miles an hour that is basically walking speed if you see any swimmers or rowers in the water please show some consideration for them slow down when passing if you can't see them get somebody to stand on the front deck and just keep a lookout for you while passing you'll notice that the ropes on the back deck in this picture are coiled up on the railing this is the best place to put the rope rather than let it trail on the deck if it trails on the deck it will be easily kicked into the water and of course then it will go straight round that propeller which will mean then you'll have to moor up and turn the engine off and then open the weed hatch to untangle all the rope. So best policy is leave the rope nicely coiled on the railing off the floor. And now we come to locks. When you arrive at the lock, the gates will open. Drive dead slow into the lock. I suggest that you nudge the boat in rather than steaming ahead. So therefore you're just doing little pushes on the throttle and then just gliding the boat in, going no faster than one mile an hour. When you come into the lock chamber itself, the person at the front of the boat, your crew, should be ready with the rope, ready to do that lassoing onto the bollard once the boat has stopped. So lasso the rope and then just keep one turn just round the bollard and hold that rope. Keep it loose to start with while the back of the boat comes alongside the lock chamber wall. Once their rope is on, then both of you hold the ropes fairly firmly um, while the lock levels go up or down. Under no circumstances must you tie off that rope or even put more than one turn round that bollard. That is to prevent you from hanging the boat. When you are in the lock, just make sure that the boat gives lots of clearance from the gates. Allow at least 10 to 15 feet from either lock gate so you're not moored close to the lock gates. There's plenty of room. That's so you don't get caught on the sill. So lots of room between the lock gates. And also be very careful if you do have to leave the boat to operate the lock, be, take extra care. It can be slippy, especially in wet weather. Remember, always have one hand on the boat. And that is basically it.